In my previous two videos from Moab, Utah, you saw me stealth camp at a hotel the first night after getting in late and get set up at my campground the next morning before heading out on my e-bike on Slick Rock Trail where I had an amazing time but made the mistake of hiking off trail where I almost died after getting stuck on the side of a 60 foot drop into a canyon. <sighs> that was dumb. <laughs> it was terrible. It was like twice I was like, mm, I might die right here. So in today's video, we're gonna dial things back a bit and show how I cook and shower while camping in my Tesla Model Y in Moab, Utah. All right, I am spent. <laughs> Between the hot sun and just the strength it takes for the bumps and all that stuff, whew, man, that just, that wore me out. Back in the car, got the uh, sunshades up now because it's getting hot out. It's only about 80 degrees, but it feels like it's about 95 in the sun. I did take some water to my leg and tried to wipe that off as much as I could. And then I took some hand sanitizer and right on it and did that. Let's just say that didn't feel well. Kind of reminded me of the movies when they like take vodka, like do that and then pour it on an open wound. Probably wasn't that intense, but <laughs> but uh, it didn't feel good. Let's just say that, it, it, it hurt. But yeah, that should hopefully clean it out. And now I'm gonna get out of the sun for a little bit. I'm gonna sit on my computer inside and just do a little bit of work for about the next hour or so. I might even take a nap because that just literally took everything I had out of me. If you get a chance though, and you come to Moab, take your mountain bike, take your e-bike, go to the trails around here. You won't regret it. It's some of the most fun you'll have. Uh, there's, they obviously have dune buggies that you can rent um, in the area. You can take boat rides on the river. And then when you're downtown, there's restaurants and bars and outdoor seating and you got campsites that are inexpensive. This is $15 a night. Beautiful scenery, amazing trails. You will not regret coming to Moab, that's for sure. All right, so let's take a look at how I have the campsite set up right now. So far, I just had to put a couple leveling blocks under the back left, but otherwise, pretty good. Kind of a uh, little office set up right there, but that's the refrigerator, and I'm kind of charging a bunch of things. I'm actually charging the shower. So that's the electric shower that I have. You just uh, connect this, I'll show you outside in a second, and then drop that into the water, and works perfect. It's actually one of the best showers I've found on the market so far. Charging up my light for the back right there with uh, USB-C charging. Got the window things up right there keeping the sun out from the inside, keeping it nice and cool. I have my new 1800 watt portable solar generator um, from Opus inside, and I'm testing it out right now. And these are two 100 watt panels. What I do like about these panels compared to the Jackeries is that when they fold up, they're much smaller. It, it folds all the way up to just this one little square. So it's about, I don't know, I'd say at least half the size, if not more, of the Jackery ones that I previously had been using, which again, they both work great. Um, both are working pretty much about the same. Um, one thing I'll say about the Opus is it's about 35% cheaper, 40% cheaper. So I'm testing it out and seeing if it's gonna be as good as the, uh, as the Jackery or if the Jackery's worth the money. But testing it out for like the first time, you can see, got it right there. Got Starlink plugged into it. I also have, can't really see because the bed is blocking part of it, but down there, this is the 12 volt going into the Tesla. So it kind of acts as a pass through. The Tesla is charging it. At the same time, I have the two solar panels going in here. And so I'm getting about, let's see here, how many watts am I getting in right now? Getting 232 watts in. I'm using about 37 from the Starlink. So not bad at all. I'm probably gonna use this later. I'm gonna use one of the other ports right here for the AC ports, there's three of them. I'm gonna use that to fire up the air fryer. And I think tonight I'm gonna make some chicken. I got the bed right there, obviously a little messy. Starlink coming out from right there. 
Got that over there. I did have it on top of my Yakima XL box here, but I took it off because I needed to get inside. So I'm just gonna leave it actually right there. Got my chair, have my little toilet, although I don't need that for the portable toilet because there's actually one right next to me. My electric XP light bike, have it underneath here, kind of see. I just put the cover over it whenever I'm at a campground, just so that if it gets windy and stuff, the dust doesn't get in everything. And plus the sun, it's just gonna keep it looking newer, a little bit longer. Then of course, the Yakima XO system here, with the swing arm right there, and then the box. Uh, so this is the shower. So this part actually is the part that drops down into the water. Um, you can see I have a seven gallon jug right there of water. I have it out in the sun because that'll heat it up. And then by the time I'm ready to take a shower in the early evening, it'll be nice and warm. Then I have my shower slash bathroom right there. And uh, yeah, this just goes, you just plug it in and well, the battery's charging right now inside as I just showed you, but then you'll just take this part and just open up the red part on the seven gallon tank right there and then just drop this in and works perfect. Did get sent this helmet by a company. This is a uh, bike helmet from Xnito. I think that's how you spell it. I don't know if the X is silent or not, but uh, looks like Xnito. And kind of a retro look to it. I thought it was really cool. It reminded me of like the old skateboarding helmets when we go like half pipes and stuff. So I thought that was kind of cool. They sent this to me and wanted me to try it out. So I'll be trying it out over the next few days while I'm uh, e-biking around. If you do like the look of this uh, retro biking helmet, I'll put more information with a link to it in the description below. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. And then the star of the show, <laughs> the Starlink. I have like 100 megs down right now, out here kind of barely any signal here in Moab. And this thing, the car's connected to it, my phone's connected to it. My laptop is connected to it, works perfect, and I can work while I'm on the road. So that's kind of the setup right now. This is kind of after like a year and a half, two years of tinkering and stuff. I feel like I'm pretty close to what I want if you're going to camp out of a Model Y. In here, it's just like a bunch of lighter stuff that's like, like food, things like that for cooking. Here's my uh, burner, my butane burner. Some kitchen, other kitchen stuff, some towels, things like that. Stuff that I, I don't use that often, but when I'm at a campsite, I'll definitely use. I actually need to organize it a little bit better right now. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I think it's a cool little setup. And then when I'm ready to shower, you can see you got the shower right up there with that nozzle. And then I just take the water and stand it up in here open that uh, red part, the large you know, mouth part of it, and then just drop that in. And uh, it's good water pressure. Thing I can probably shower like six, seven times with that, just that one seven gallon jug, um, if not more. Uh, kind of just take what's called a Navy shower, just kind of lather up, use a loofah. And once you get all like lathered up and suds in your hair, then all you do is uh, turn it on, rinse off, and you're good to go. So that's the current setup. All right, so I actually got a few raindrops out there and it clouded over a little bit. I'm still gonna leave my solar panels out there because there's, you know, they're probably still getting a little bit of sun. But yeah, I was pulling in like 250, almost 300 watts earlier, which between the 12 volts on the car and the two solar panels, I think it's pretty good. And we're gonna turn on camp mode though, just so we keep everything nice and cool in here. And again, the windows covered with the shiny side to the outside to reflect the heat. And we're gonna go over here to camp mode, tap that. And camp mode is enabled. Currently I have 65%. While I was gone, it was using sentry mode, the security system. And that also makes sure that the 12 volt uh, stays awake and keeps the fridge freezer on. So you need to either have sentry mode on or camp mode. I just leave sentry mode on all the time. And then when I get to a campground, I'll just turn camp mode on, which I just did. So we currently have it set, I'm gonna set it to 69 and keep it nice and cool in here. 
There's the screensaver on the Tesla for cat mode. Yeah, since it's raining out, uh, this is probably a good time to talk about the new portable power station that I have from Opus. And I was just looking at their solar panels to find out to make sure that they are waterproof. It says waterproof and splash proof. Solar panel for camping is IPX4 water resistant and will protect from water splashing. It's not completely waterproof against heavy rain and flooding. Um, so yeah, don't leave it on the rain. Right now, it's kind of a light rain. I might actually go throw them in the back until it's done. And then just to make sure. Again, honestly, this company, they reached out to me like about a month ago. The cool thing about their solar generator is that it has 3,500 plus life cycles. The Jackery 1500, which is the same, it's 1800 watt as well. It's only 500 life cycles. So way better, it uses a lithium iron phosphate chemistry. And it actually, surprisingly, even though it does that, it's actually a few pounds lighter. Also just a tad smaller than the Jackery 1500. Um, again, I don't know long-term, but it's also a lot less. Probably five, it's almost like 40 some percent cheaper. So you got the three AC ports on here. You got the power button. You got two inputs. Uh, currently I'm using this one for the 12 volt in the rear of the Model Y. And then on this one, I'm using one that has a splitter and then goes to the two different 100 watt solar panels. And then over here, you got a 12 volt going out if you wanted to power something uh, like the shower that I have or something like that. Um, and then here you have two USB-C plugs and two USB-A plugs. Then, you know, of course you have the whole screen there that shows everything from, you know, how many uh, like output up here, input on the bottom, how many hours left you have, the percentage, all that stuff. So yeah, so far, I mean, it's been performing over the last week and a half as good, if not better than the Jackery 1500. Again, long-term, you know, they definitely don't have the name that Jackery has. Um, I'm not sure of their support, although I believe they said they do respond within 24 hours to everybody. You know, it's an option. And they also have different models that are a little bit less. Um, you know, you might not want the, the 1800 watt. I have that because I want to use things like the air fryer to cook. Um, obviously, if you wanted to use like a hair dryer for uh, a, a woman or something like that, you could do that. Um, but you don't have to do that. You could go with, <clears throat> it's got all the way up to 2400, 1800 like I have, 1200, and then also a 600 watt. If you don't want to go with for the full 1800, you know, this is only 399. And that would still easily power all your electronics from laptops to phones um, and fast charge compared to like, you know, plug them into your car. And of course, you can power the Starlink. So even with just something like this, and you could use this for probably some co smaller cooking devices. If you are interested in picking one up, I will put a link in the description of this video down below. I will be doing a full review of the uh, Opus 1800 watt portable power station uh, with solar panels. Until then, I'll keep using it. I'll keep showing you guys how it's performing. And you know, if you guys can save 40% compared to another company, I'm gonna tell you about it. But so far, after, you know, like a week, week and a half of testing, you know, it works just as good, if not better. Why spend 40% more? Well, that rain didn't last long. <laughs> Hot and sunny again. Nothing wrong with that though. All right, so hooked the battery here for the shower up. Then, there you go. Just hold that down. That's it. And then this end, obviously, like I said, this just goes into the water. You just put this into the seven gallon tank. And then this side, it doesn't go into the water. It just sits here and that's what you turn it on and off with. And then this side is the actual shower. Let me get a little wider view here. What's cool about this shower is, is that it's off right now. And you know, usually there's like a really difficult like button to push or something like that. You don't have to do anything except for just go like that, just straight. All right, so I am getting ready to cook dinner. I have some drumsticks and I have some vegetables too, but I think I'm gonna save those as like a snack for later. And instead I'm going to just do some ramen, good old fashioned like cheap ramen. 
just kind of felt like that today. We've had these storms that keep coming kind of near us, but never really hitting us. Had a little light rain earlier, but that was about it. So I'm hoping that stays off because it's nice and clear over there. But if not, <laughs> to get everything inside real quick. All right, first things first, I'm going to plug in the Ninja and warm that up. Um, I need to go over here and plug it in. All right, so that is pulling in. This thing is gonna, the Ninja's about, uh, it can be anywhere up to like 16, 17, 1800 watts. Uh, I have an 1800 uh, power station from Opus and that's just inside the vehicle right there. You kinda, it's right there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on now. Get this warmed up. I'll go air fry. Uh, yeah, 390 sounds good and we'll start. And then I'm going to go ahead and season these real quick. There we go. A little bit of this stuff. I love this stuff. <laughs> All right, so that's basically it. Go ahead. There we go. Set for 20 minutes, kind of played by ear. I do have a thermometer, so I'll check it. Well, I'm an idiot. My bowl is in there. Crap. That's the only thing I hate about camping with such little space. Luckily, you can move it quick. Get my bowl. Let's take the small bowl out of here real quick. Top and the handle. That's it for now. Air fryer makes it so easy. <laughs> I cook this till about 160 degrees. All right, easy enough. The little butane things are awesome. They don't work great in cold weather, but luckily enough, I don't uh, camp in cold weather too often. Good old, good old college ramen. <laughs> I just saw it in the supermarket today and was like, you know what? I was like, I don't know what I really feel like eating, but that's kind of simple with the chicken. So I was like, I think chicken flavored ramen noodles sounds good. Well, so far, staying over there on the other side of the mountain. Nice and clear. A little windy, but not too bad. I'm actually going to put this on just to trap the heat. Hopefully boil a little faster. Looking good. I do still want to shower tonight too. So I'm going to eat and then probably take a shower right after. Get nice and clean before heading to bed. Looking good, probably only a few more minutes. All right, so I took two out, 
put them in there. Gonna eat these three and just uh, about ready to put the ramen in for about three minutes. So we'll pack it out. There we go. And while I'm cooking, <laughs> it's got views of people just hitting all the trails up here. Pretty cool area. All right, that should be good here. Oh yeah, and turn this off. That up. All right, take this. That's why I like these too on Amazon because then you can, these are easier for packing and it's easier to store when they're like this. And then you just take it go like that. Oh. Well, forgot to put in the seasoning, but I'll do that now. All right, so I'm gonna take those and store those in the fridge. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here to clear that out. Just let that soak. Rinse this out. And that's basically it. Like I said, I'll throw this in the fridge. I'll come back out after I'm done eating and clean everything up. Take a shower and head off to bed. All right, ready to eat. Let's see, I'm trying to find... All right, I, I, let's get real here for a second. When you're camping in a vehicle this small, it can get frustrating. It happens to everybody. And ask anybody who's ever car camped, truck camped, or anything like that. When you wanna to get to something, or let's say you wanna like cook, I have to move like 10 things to get to one thing. And sometimes like I forgot, I started cooking, and then I forgot a couple things. I actually went back twice to the XO cargo box, into the Yakima cargo box. I only showed you guys one, but then like five minutes later, I was like, oh. I was like, I forgot the thermometer. It's in the, tote that's in there so that can get very challenging i mean it's still fine it's just that everything becomes a mess and ask anybody who does van life same thing they'll probably even say that and they have more room so you just got to be patient with it <laughs> so like even trying to eat right now there's just not a lot of room in here and so i'm going to be very gentle when i move stuff because i don't want to knock anything over but let me grab my tray here so i can eat as always, I will link to all of this stuff in the description below. If you're interested in any of the camping gear that I have, it's all down there. If it's not, ask me and I'll link to it in the comments. All right, so got the chicken here. Just the three pieces. And then I got the soup right here. There you go. Dig in and grab a bite. Mm. This meal was like under $5 too. <laughs> yeah, super good. All right, let's try a little of the ramen. Take me back to younger years. It's ramen. All right, I'm gonna finish eating. I'll catch up with you guys after I clean everything up because that's the boring stuff that I hate doing and you probably don't want to watch. So I'll see you after that. And actually, I'm probably going to jump in the shower. And then after that, probably head to bed fairly early. All right, that was good. Take this, slide it here between the con center console and the passenger seat. All right, time to go shower. All right, well, uh, apparently I got a little bit of sun today. <laughs> uh, one thing I did do is I took a shower and it was spectacular. Um, it was just getting dark though, and I didn't get to film any of like leading up to it. Um, but I showed you guys the inside of the shower earlier. Uh, yeah, it was 
it was great. I felt so much better. Uh, but yeah, got a little bit of sun today <laughs> out riding the bike. Um, I am dumping footage right now from all the different cameras, drones, and different, you know, like the camera like on my chest and all sorts of other ones, the road cams that I got and all that stuff. So I'm dumping all that footage right now. It is, it's getting late. What is it? 11.15 p.m. And I'm heading out in the morning pretty early. So trying to get all of the files in the proper order. I kind of have a system that I do for each video. You know, you're talking like a lot of these hundreds of gigabytes and stuff like that. So uh, trying to get all that done real quick. I'm almost done with it. I think I have one more, uh, the drone. And then I am headed off to bed. I'm not even going to watch really too much. I do have, uh, let's see if we can put this on. I do have Reed Timmer intercepting a tornado the other day. <laughs> and Dominic, oh, that's, that's Reed for you. He, li he likes to yell. <laughs> but I was just checking that out real quick, watching a few videos on YouTube and then off to bed. So I will see you guys in the morning. Good morning. It's about 7.15 and just getting up, gonna see outside. Getting ready to take off this morning. Taking off for Park City, Utah. Head out here shortly. I think it's about a four hour drive, something along that lines. But had a great time here in Moab. Uh, you know, it's one of my favorite places to come camp. If you haven't been, I'd, I'd highly suggest you make a make a road trip out here. Wish I had a little more time here, but I kind of have a schedule to keep and need to be up in the Northwest uh, later this week. But now I got to go get my shower uh, packed up and grab a couple other things in the back here and, and try to get them a little bit more organized before taking off. So I'm going to go do that and get on the road. Just looking at here at camp mode, I'm at 47%. I have no idea what I was at yesterday in the afternoon. I think like 50 something, but typically you're looking at a little less than 1% per hour loss uh, for using camp mode. Uh, and with 47%, I likely will have to stop at the supercharger on the way out of town. Uh, it's conveniently located, literally right on the way. So that's not going to be an issue. But yeah, then we're looking at about a four hour ride. Uh, time to take off. So got to break all this stuff down, get it in the back here and take off. Just hold it. All right, so pretty much have everything loaded up. It's really just the bike, bed. Bed only takes like 30 seconds to deflate. Um, and about three minutes to inflate, so not a big deal. I uh, just moved the portable power station from Opus up a little bit, and then down here, basically just blankets. Always make sure you take your trash out, leave no trace when you're uh, camping. And yeah, gotta put a few things away here. But other than that, we're pretty much ready to go. And now I've got the blanket over everything, so with the tinted windows, can't even see anything, it just looks black in the inside. Everything's nice and organized now too, <laughs> which is a welcome sign. All right, and only thing left, this thing. Let the fighting begin. Well, my friends, that was a world record. It took about mm, maybe 60 seconds. I got lucky, <laughs> but she's all in there. Everything's in there, time to take off. All right, so I got everything packed up ready to go. Uh, it's time to hit the road and head for Park City. So I think that's about it from Moab. Had an amazing time. Trails were just incredible and I highly encourage you to visit if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next travel quick tip or review video. Thanks for watching.